Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you. Now this is a new week and I bless God for even this new month of July. Listen, we have stepped into the second half of the year 2020 and this is the word of the Lord concerning this second half of the year. Listen, the first half of the year is gone. Hallelujah. And now you begin to see the hand of God rising up over your life and causing his blessing and his goodness to be made manifest in your life. Listen to me. 2020 is a good year. <laughs> Praise God. You know, you know, the Lord told us at the beginning of the year that, look, this coronavirus thing is a big distraction. Don't pay attention to it. Now, he wasn't talking to the whole world. He's talking to, he was talking to his children, you and I. Praise God. And, and because we set our eyes on him and he's brought us all till this time. And listen, now he is taking us into the place that he has ordained for us to be in 2020. Praise God. It's still a good year and you're going to see the blessing of God made manifest in your life. Praise God. Oh, we bless you, Father, for today. Thank you for the glory of your word. We open our heart to receive and Holy Spirit, you will not hold back anything that is profitable to us today. As we look into the scriptures, Revelations flood our hearts. And everyone watching and listening right now will hear your voice in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. I'm so glad. Now, we, we have been on the study of 1 Corinthians and today we are entering into chapter 3. You know, I was just thinking about it for two weeks. You know, <laughs> we were on chapter 1 and 2. And I told you earlier, we'll just be on this until the Lord tells us what next to do. Now, that's how you work with the Lord. You don't try to come up with, okay, what do I do next? He tells you, study 1 Corinthians. That's, that's, what exa that's exactly what we're doing. And we are going to be on this. If he tells us tomorrow, okay, I want you to look at something else. Yes, sir. Praise God. And you know the blessing? It is because of you that he is doing this. So open your heart and receive all that the Lord has for you, even today and this whole week, praise God. So 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and we begin from verse 1. It says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Now I want you to observe something here. He said, and I, brethren, could not speak unto you. Now, when is he talking about? Look at chapter, let's go back to chapter 2. I want to show you something. In chapter 2, verse 1, he says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Now, look at 2. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. I'm not coming to preach to you because of the things I have heard about you. That's what he was trying to say. Listen, I, I came, the only determination in my heart concerning you is to know what? Jesus Christ and him crucified. So I'm looking at you and I want to say the effect the gospel of Christ, the gospel of the cross has had in your life. Then now he comes over here and says, when I came, see, when I came, I could not speak to you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. What's he saying? Listen, I didn't hear news about you. I didn't try to investigate about you. You know, sometimes you, you're, you're invited to preach. So, oh, those, those people in that area, what do they need the most? What, do they, what kind of message will they need the most? You are not the one who determines that. You are not. You know, in, 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 in certain schools, they tell you those things. You know, when you're going you know, to preach in a place, you have to know their needs. You have to know what they want. No! Not unless you know from, how do you know? From the one who knows them. And who's that one? The Holy Spirit. It's not for you to begin to investigate and think, okay, these people, they need a lot of money. That might just not be what they need. I have seen people come to me, you know, and say, oh, Pastor, please, I, 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 I'm in this deep trouble. I, I, you know, and while they are speaking, and the Holy Spirit will just say something to me. He say, hey, tell him 
or tell her that she's holding grudges against her husband and she's got to let go. You know, I remember, you know, severally things like this have happened. And they're like, but, but that's not what I'm talking about, but that's what the Spirit of God is saying. Take care of this and everything is going to be all right. Okay, sir. Um, Pastor, won't you pray for me? No, I have told you what the Spirit of God is saying. There is nothing my prayer is going to do right now except that you be strengthened to obey the Lord. But what about all this other issue? Take care of this. You know, people most times think they know what their problem is. You don't know. Until the Spirit of God opens your understanding. You may be there for 20 years struggling with the same thing. Until the day you pause and say, Holy Spirit, can you open my understanding? And he will show you. Say, that's the problem. But how does this relate with this? Now, he says, he came to see. He wanted to know their state in Christ Jesus. Now, when he came, and how do you know that as a preacher? You check the utterance that is being given to you. Oh, you want to know how the state of someone? I remember years ago. You know, I was talking to a dear lady. I was counseling her. And we were talking and talking. And then I paused. I said, hold on. I have told you all these things I'm telling you now. I have told you the same thing last year. He said, yes, pastor. And that's what I was wondering. I said, hold on. It then means that you haven't obeyed anyone. You haven't done them. And she said, yes, sir. Now, not because I remembered what I said. I was speaking by the Spirit of God. And then I like, these words are, are sounding familiar to me. And then, and then the Spirit of God said, like, this is the reason she's not done them. So, so for one year, she was in the same place. And then after one year, she came back, you know, oh Lord, you need to do a miracle. For, and then the Lord said the same thing he said last day. And that's how a lot of people's lives are. So he says, I couldn't speak unto you as unto spiritual. I couldn't tell you some deep things. I couldn't tell you some truths. But rather, you see, I, I could, but as unto carnal. See, meaning fleshly. Let me read the Amplified. He said, how are brethren? I could not speak to you as to spiritual men, but as to non-spiritual men of the flesh in whom the carnal nature predominates. What's the carnal nature? The fleshly nature. It says, even as unto babes in Christ. Verse 2 says, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. I couldn't feed you with meat. What is meat? The strong things of the word of God. See, I couldn't give it to you. I couldn't feed you with milk. I fed, fed you with milk and not with me. For he that to you were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are you able. There are certain people. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, Jesus said to his disciples one time, he says, there are many things I would love to tell you, but you cannot handle it now. How, how, many, how many times have God looked at you and said, look, you, you know, some people can't even handle the truth. Because sometimes the truth will hit you. And the truth will require you submitting to it. And many times people are too proud. They are not willing to submit to the truth. So, you know, you know, God leaves them there and, okay, continue. Until the day you run out of steam, the day you run out of energy, then you come before the Lord and say, Lord, I need your help. And he says, go do this. You know, like the Lord told me one time, you know, sometimes we pray concerning something and we don't see the results till after one year, after six months, after two years. And then, well, man, it took God two years to answer this, this thing. No, he, he didn't. He didn't. The Lord, be, the, Lord, no, the Lord answered you the very moment you prayed. But it took you two years to see the answer. How did that happen? You see, because precept must be upon precept. Line must be upon line. So the day you pray, say, Father, I need a car. All right. You know what? The Lord began to move you. He began to order your steps. He made you to meet somebody a week later. He made you to get an information three days later. He made you to say, he made you to see someone say, come, do you even drive? Say, no, I'm thinking, oh, come, let me, let me, let me, let me teach you how to drive. He, all those things were going on and going on. And then after two years, someone walks up to you and said, I don't know, I felt led in my heart to give you this car. 
Oh, and op open door comes up and then you, you got the money. What, what do I do with the money I heard from the Spirit of God? Go get a car. Oh, yes, yes. How come I forgot? And then he said, man, I asked God for this car two years ago. You think he's after two years he answered you? No, he answered you the day that you prayed. But things were being set in place. So when the car comes, you will actually own it. And that's how God operates. So he says, there are strong meats that God, you know, now if God tells you, you're not going to get that count in two years. Ah, no, no. You know, you start thinking of the sin that you have committed that make it. You know, sometimes people say, I think, I think God has abandoned me. How can God abandon me? Didn't Jesus say, I will never leave you nor forsake you? For him to abandon you, he will be breaking his own word. And do you know what that means? He, he is qualified for death. <laughs> Praise God. Because that is sin. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So he will not break his word. But do you know what? You can turn your back on him even though he is there. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, now, how do you know? How did Paul know that he was dealing with babes? How did Paul know that he was dealing with children? I'll show you. Look at it. It's, it's written in verse 3. It's written in verse 3. It says, for are you not yet carnal? For whereas there is among you envy and strife and division, are you not carnal and walk as men? Praise God. He's asking them, how did he know they were carnal? It's be, look, I says, for are you not yet carnal? Whereas there is what? Among you envy, walk of the flesh strife you're striving over each oh it's mine it's my own i'm the one that did this i'm not come on it says division division the next verse tells you what that division is for while one say i am of paul and another i am of apollos are you not yet are you not carnal you know it's funny i remember the lord talking to me you know, one time, and then he says, the church is still in the babyhood level. And I began to, Lord, how? He said, that's why there are certain things that I cannot even give to the church. Not because they don't belong to them. But remember, he says, and eh, as long as he's a child, is kept under tutors and governors. We are not ruling the way we ought to rule. You know why? Not because God is holding us back, but because the church is still acting as babes. How do you know the church is acting as babes? Look at it. Except you come to my church. You're not a Christian. Oh, I belong to this church. You know, you're talking to someone and say, hey, what church do you go to? Oh, oh okay. Ah, well, good, good church. Good church. Good church. Me, I belong to Susan and so church. But you know, you know something I don't like about your church? Come on, what, 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 what kind of talk is that? That is what? Carnality. You know, imagine sitting down with a believer and you guys are discussing and just talking, faith, talking. And then at the end of the day, you're like, oh, I didn't even ask that guy what church he goes to. But man, that guy is my, he's a believer. That guy is my brother. He said, you, you're a brother in Christ. That's the maturity that God is bringing us into praise God when, when we don't see those divisions anymore, but we see Christ Jesus, hallelujah. So, when I meet someone, it doesn't matter who the person, it doesn't matter where the person goes to, I'm looking for Christ. The same thing Paul said, When I came to you, I'm looking for Christ and Him crucified in you. That's what I'm looking for in you. So, it doesn't matter what denomination you go to, no, it doesn't. When we begin to talk denominate, when we begin to talk, oh, our church is the biggest church. Our church is the, come on, you are carnal. Oh, come, for, come to our church. There's a miracle. There's a miracle where uh, you are carnal. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Get out from carnality. Hallelujah. I'll see you tomorrow. And I pray that this day, the Lord will open the heavens over you and bring you great blessings. Receive your daily bread today, praise God. Amen. Bye-bye.